there, welcome to the ninth Midweek Photo Talk. My name is Kevin Elizabeth, and you can find me here on Google Plus or at uh, www.portrayu.com. I'm going to be your host this week. Our usual host is, is laid up with illness. Due to the disparity in time zones, uh, some of our panellists are missing. So uh, our guest this week is from California, and I'm in Ireland, so we... Uh, We've managed to put this together reasonably well, I think. Uh, this week our guest is Olive Folland, and we are talking about budget lighting with minimalist gear. Uh, over to you, Olive. Well, as you said, um, I'm Olaf. You can find me on Google+. Plus. I'm probably not terribly hard to find. There's not um, too many people with my name. Uh, my own website is squareheadphotography.com. It's actually linked off of my, my profile. It's just the easiest way to spell it. But uh, as you can see, we're hanging out in my garage tonight because you know, I've got, as like a lot of people, you know, I just do things out of the house. And, you know, you make do with the room you got. And this is about the amount, of, this is the biggest space we could afford. So, you know, I've got, I've got a basic kit. I've got, you know, you can see behind me here, I've got a, a, I've got a 9 by 20 backdrop and a couple of strobes and, um, you know, just kind of the, other than that, pretty much the basic gear you probably have in your bag. Uh, you know, camera, tripod, um, a couple of remotes for this and that and the other thing, but... Uh, you know, we're not we're not making money off of it, so everything is pretty much just you know what you can cobble together with, with what you got at the time. Tell us about your uh, um, your lights, Olive. Um, give us a, a brief rundown on them. Yeah, I think we, were, we we talked in the pre-show. Um, I started out with uh, I started out with a, with a set of uh, static lights. There were you know. 500 watt tungstens, you know, with the big nice beauty dish and the umbrella and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, they were, you know, it was like a $200 set or something like that. And they came with the stands and everything. Um, and really wasn't a bad way to go to just figure out what to do in the studio. Um, you've got, you know, it's easier in a lot of ways because you've got just the, the light is always there. You can meter it. And you can just kind of work with what you got, but it's never going to be bright enough for, for a lot of things, you know, which is the drawback, which is what made me go to Stroh's. Um, so now I've got, uh, I, I'm running Brightex strobes right now, which are the HX, HS600s, they're 160 watt seconds, which, again, they're not the brightest ones in the market, but, you know, I've got a, I'm in my garage. They come with Sorry. a, uh, a modelling light as well, though, don't they? So that's a, that's a great yeah. benefit. So it's a you know it's a basic strobe. You don't have uh, one of the things I, I wish that I had. You can't infinitely dial the lighting. I've got just like three sets, three three stops for the the settings. But uh, you know you, you've got the model lights. You've got the you've got the, the strobe. Um, and you can tether it to your camera, or what I did is uh, I've got some really cheap, just wireless remotes. Um, so I think they're about 30 bucks on Amazon, they're the Cowboy Studios rigs. And you have a, you know, just a basic trigger you put on your hot shoe, and um, just a, a remote you plug into the, into the strobe to, as a receiver. And you know, you, if you're running manual, it, it just it just works. Yeah. You know, you don't yeah, have to I think a lot of us have those. A uh, uh, the, the, lot of Chinese source ones. I personally use uh, uh, Yongyo's. Uh, I think that's six oh threes. Very cheap, very reliable, and wireless. And you can hook them up yeah. to uh, studio lights or uh, uh, speed lights or anything. So yeah, they are cheap. They work. They work well. Yeah, that was. That was the thing with, with the ones I got is they you can you can hot shoot, you can put strobes on hot, uh, speed lights on hot shoe, and um, that's actually something I'm going to implement down the road as I'm looking at doing a portable rig using reusing a lot of my gear 
and just getting different soft boxes that are set up for, for speed lights so I can take them out in, in the country because obviously you can't take these things. <laughs> and Sorry, you know what the, uh, the soft boxes, uh, what, uh, what size are they? They are okay. 20 by 30s. Um, they're actually, I think, two generations. They ended up being Cowboy Studios again, just because I trust, you know, the brand's pretty good. Um, you know, they're not fancy, but you can you can make them work for pretty much anything. Um, and I think they were about yeah. 40 bucks a pop. That's cheap. Thereabouts. Yeah, exactly. It's cheap. You, you're not going to, you don't want to collapse them. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna take them down, you take it off and you just set it aside. You don't you don't break it break it down because yeah. you don't want to put it back together again. <laughs> but which is which is why I want to do something else, something different for for portable rig. But I don't think the speed lights are bright enough for a lot of what I want to shoot because I like okay. to do a lot of heat yeah. type work. You know, and you just can't get enough throw with a. Uh, with the speed light for that kind of stuff without having the exactly, strobes yeah. right here in your face, in your model's face. Um, but so, yeah, I think the, I don't know, the, the, the bright types, like I said, I think they're about 90 bucks a pop, which I've seen cheaper ones, but I've, my first cheaper one I also ended up sending yeah. back because it's, it's cheap and it's garbage. Cheap. So, <laughs> it's cheap and it's cheap, yeah. These, you know, these, these have lasted me. You know, I've had these for about a year now, and they. And so. your, your background <laughs> uh, is that is that yeah, vinyl or all, is that paper? Or what is it? Um, this one is actually vinyl. Um, this is one I invested in this. Uh, I bought this back in November, and it's really nice in a lot of ways. Actually, I'll I'll, I'll say it's kind of a cool thing because you can just make a mess out of it. You know, we did a, a couple of shoots where I had. Had uh, my model uh, wow. <laughs> tomatoes with her hands, you know, um, and you can imagine what kind of mess that sort of makes, you know, because you've just got tomatoes everywhere, and if it were a sheet, you're you're to it's toast, and it gets on the backdrop, it gets on the floor, it gets every, you know, and you just grab a towel and you wipe it clean, and it's done. Um, you, know, you got to kind of watch having. You got you kind of got to watch your 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 depth of field a little bit with the vinyl because it okay. the texture is yeah. a little bit different than it is on with a fabric backdrop. Um, you get that little bit of ridges in there and stuff, and that's something that I constantly fight. You know, so you either have to bring up the key or you have to make sure that, that you're far enough away from the backdrop, which isn't always possible have either. You, have you always used the vinyl, or have you, have you, have you, used, have you um, used paper? But, or? Um, I've got a paper roll, and I like that for, for some things. I break that out sometimes. Um, the other thing I use a lot, if I'm, especially if I'm just doing headshots, uh, is I'll go to Walmart or one of those type of stores, and I'll buy really cheap sheets. Yeah. Right. For, you know, for about $20, you can get a really nice dark blue backdrop or something like that and just clip it up on your, on whatever you're using to, to hold your backdrop up. You know, I'm, I've got a, I think I've, I've got about a, there again, about $180 set of stands in a, in a, in a, in a crossbar that I can hang everything from. But, you know, if you're just mounting things to the wall yeah. or whatever. So you, you, know, you spend a little bit more money on your stands. Really nice. I would say they need to be the, substantial um, to, to be able to hold up the weight of the vinyl anyway, don't you? Um, uh -huh. These actually, I, I'm going to upgrade them at some point. They're not as sturdy as they could be. They're, um, they're uh, Smith Victors and they're pretty light. But for the most part, I mean, they do the job as long as you're not don't have your kids like <laughs> trying to do, you know, yeah. use them as monkey bars. They they, they work out all right. Um, you know, just yeah, they're just a little bit too thin. But you know, I got you know I got the entire rig for what you can set to pay for one stand sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So so in rough it, figures, I don't want to put you on the spot. In rough figures. 
roughly without the camera, uh, what what would your gear be worth? Um, I would say rough figures. The just the basic studio rig. I I think I'm looking at a. About that's pretty reasonable. Five hundred bucks, five hundred tops. Yeah, that's for for everything. Yeah, yeah, that's that's lights, stands, backdrop. The backdrop I found. You know, I waited until I found a, a deal reasonable. on it. I think I paid what eighty bucks for that. Yeah, you know, which I, I would. How how wide is that? Kind of have to shop around a little bit. Ten foot wide, that kind of stuff, wide. Right? It's a it's nine foot yeah. wide and uh, it's a twenty foot long drop. Very good. Yeah. So you can you know it comes all the way out pretty much into the room. Yeah. So you can set up you can stage anywhere. Uh, about uh, as do far you back find the width you want. limiting at all? Oh yeah, I mean, of course. You know, I was trying to do some photos of the the family over the weekend, and you know my folks were in town, and we were trying to get seven people. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So, so it has limitations. Nice backdrop, it just, it really I mean, uh, well. let's face it, uh, you know, yeah. I, I think you've got a great setup there for the cost especially, but I mean, you have to work within your limitations and uh, obviously if you want to uh, to to do different right. things that you're just basically going to have to spend a bit more money, that's what it comes down to with most things though, isn't it? Well, you know, I try to keep everything, you know, as... as yeah budget conscious as I can and as virtual as I can because I you know my wife also shoots and I shoot and we um yeah. we both have very different interests for the most part and so we want to be able to use the space as much as we can for as many purposes uh -huh. you know she tends to do a lot more macro photography than I do for example we we're talking earlier you know <laughs> You know, she's got a macro lens, I don't, so if I need a macro lens, I steal hers. But, <laughs> um, so we'll go and and just try to try, try to make the space work as, as versatile as possible and, you know, just also yeah. just be able to have it as open, like a blank canvas. You know, we can go and, um, I had, I had planned on throwing up a sheet tonight to do, to do some, uh, dark, dark, background shots, but I think at this point we'll just uh, okay. work with what's set up for the, the, the sake of expediency. <laughs> I don't think anybody wants me to, wants to watch me change backgrounds. Uh, or wanting to get into flash gear is, is knowing where to start and can they start at a reasonable price, like, you know, without without uh, going overboard and spending, a, you know, a couple of grand on lights right. and uh, expensive stands and backdrops and as you say, remote triggers, um, that, that can add up to a quite a tidy bundle, um, even if you're going sort of uh, mid-range. Mid so, uh, you know, what you, what you have the outlay there is is, is very reasonable, uh, and uh, I mean, I've seen the, the results of some of your work, and it works, so yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you know, I, I know I've seen a lot of just basic light just your basic stroke stands with, uh, you know, strokes heads with uh, with remotes start. Yeah, yeah. Oftentimes about 700 bucks for for a nice set. You know, granted you're getting a nice set, but at the same time, some of the ones that I've seen, like I'd rather have maybe a little bit larger softbox or, you know, they have like 24 by 24s. Uh -huh. And I like having the bigger, I like having the longer drops on the on the strobes on on the softbox, so that I can do, do full length lighting, for example, you know, particularly, you know, if you want to have a model standing there, you don't want to have a small square box. You want to have a nice big light to shine you know, on, that, so that you don't you're not. Just I, I think that's another thing you know, people would uh, or having the light so far back that it's not doing anything. Stymied as as to what to buy in the way of uh, light modifiers, so. I mean, the obvious one is to go for an umbrella, and then what size, and then uh, mm. soft boxes and what size, what shape. So yeah, that's uh, that's a useful end. Well, you know, umbrellas are really not a bad place to start. You can get into an umbrella really cheap. You know, and oftentimes if you buy a strobe kit, they come with a set of umbrellas, and 
you know, you turn them around, you shoot through them, and they make a pretty decent light modifier. Right, they, they do a good job diffusing the light. Pro, you know, not as nice as a softbox, but they do a nice job. You know, I shot with them for years. They, they give you a, a good diffused light and they, they make the light wrap nicely and whatnot. Um, but they tend to have hot spots because you don't have the double baffle like you do on a on a softbox. They don't have the reflective back like a softbox does to concentrate the light and really throw okay. it forward. So you lose you lose a lot. They're they're not nearly as efficient, right? And then that's that's your big key. But you can shoot through them, or you can reflect. You can use them as a as a bounce, and you can do a lot of things with them. You know, and they're not a bad thing to just ha kind of have in your arsenal because sometimes you just may want to do that. You know, I I still have my I still have my umbrellas like in, in the box umbrellas just in case I want to use them one day. And that's that's kind of the, the the long the other long range reason I'm keeping them, but um, you know sometimes you don't necessarily want to do a, a really big bright light like the, you know even light. Right. Um, you know one of the things my wife got me for Christmas was a set of barn doors. Which. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you you've seen these things on the movie sets, right? You know, and you know, a lot of them come with uh, with a set of gels where you can do colored lighting, or you can put a diffuser in there or honeycomb to to really focus the light in a certain way. And you can have a light that just really points in a particular direction and doesn't, you know. So I want to light this part of the scene, but I don't want to light this part of the scene. So I set my door like this, and and just really focus that light in. Sure. And those, you know, clip on the, and most of that stuff is you can get universal ones. Um, How do you uh, find them in relation to using softboxes? Um, well, your softbox is your, is your general light. Um, if you're doing a nice, if you're doing just basic portraiture, softboxes are, are generally a, a good way to go. Um, I just actually got my second softbox the other week. That was a, a gift from a friend of mine who, um, from a friend of mine who uh, does, uh, she does the the prom pictures for her, her school she works at. Great, a lot of people out there who would like mm -hmm. to get into uh, studio lighting and, and lighting full stop. But as I say, where to start? And, and uh, without spending too much money, you, you, you know, you've shown that it can be done, but, um, right. and you've found that what your limitations are with the with your gear, and what you need to do to maybe extend uh, your reach in a lot of ways. Um, you know, a lot of people want to start off, don't, don't want to spend big money, because they may not actually, even though they want to do it, they may not, you know, end up liking what they're doing maybe it's beyond their capabilities so you know I, th I, th I think uh, right. it, it's, it's a great learning point or a starting point because you can start off relatively cheap and if you like it you can move on and, and start replacing the gear with uh, that's going to do the job for you so yeah well you can um, you know I think for a lot of people probably and the hard part is, you know, I, I would say go speed lights for, for most people, but those things are so bloody expensive. And if you're not willing to go fully manual, where you can buy, you know, my my portable rig is going to be, you know, $20, 10-year-old Vivitar flashes, right? Mm -hmm. You know, they're cheap, they work, but you have to work everything in manual. And you have to dial in the flash. And you have to dial in. You know, and you can't get fancy with them. Yeah. Well, it depends on you know. For for anything, whatever you want to do, you want to have two lights. I think you know you want to be able to, to put the light in from two angles. And All right. yeah. at a basic level, that's going to get you there. I mean, most of my 
pretty much almost everything I do is, is, is just done with two lights. Um, I have occasionally brought in a speed light or something else to, to kind of fill in something specific. But the hard part is just keeping it flexible. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's the big thing is you don't want to have a rig that you're going to never want to use. You know, until I got the garage cleared out here, um, I hardly ever used my lights. I never, you know, I wanted to do things with them, but I never, I didn't have the space. I didn't have the inclination to go and, you know, go set everything up in the living room. I don't get to park the cars anymore, but, you know. <laughs> Priority is <laughs> dead right, yes, yes. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, you know, priorities, right? <laughs> <laughs> So, so when you you first got into lighting, what, I mean, uh, park both of them in this bloody what did you start anyway, doing? So was it was it really to work, or were you just uh, how did how did you start? Yeah. Did you? Uh... Um, yeah, particularly with the with the static lights, we did I did a lot of stuff. Um, we actually, my wife at one point had because she was really into the macro stuff. We um, scratch built a uh, softbox. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, a light box. Um, out of PVC and you know the the grids they put on your fluorescent lights like the industrial fluorescent lights uh -huh. so we built a PVC frame and then taped the the fluorescent panels because that makes a nice they make them nice diffuser panels and so we built a soft it wasn't portable but we built a soft box for about I don't know it was like about forty dollar tops maybe maybe thirty bucks um, so we would use it for that um, I did a lot of I did a lot of art type pieces, it's not really good for what you would consider studio portraiture because you can't get enough light in there to really, you know, so you've got to go longer exposure with your statics to, and you've got the other problem of they're so hot that, you know, if you're going to really get the lights in close <laughs> to really put a good amount of light on your model space that if they're wearing makeup, for example, it's going to run because they're going to sweat. You know. When you figure, you know, you got two lights that are 500 watts a piece, so you got 1,000 watts of, I hope of light cool sitting right, right there on your face, nice and, warm, and anyway. it's always there. <laughs> and the longer you sit there, the hotter you're going to get. <laughs> and... Yeah, it's not bad. Well, yeah, yeah, we gotta watch yeah. that. We've got the heater over in the in the corner, but it can get pretty cold out here um, in the in the winter. In the summer, it can get pretty hot though. That's the okay. thing. And the other thing about um, static lights is because they're tungsten, you have to watch your color balance really, really carefully, okay. right? Because most of them are. I, if I remember, 4,300 so, Kelvin. How, how do you, do, do you, um, and sunlight do you balance is your camera what, first time with a grey card or a white 6, card, or Kelvin? do you just set your camera settings, uh, so, your balance settings in your camera to, if you've got that option? Oh, if you're, I mean, if you're running a statics, you got to shoot at night, because you can't have anything, you can't have anything that's going to, interfere with the light because you're going to get mixed color balance and everything's going to be all wonky. Um, because you'll have, you know, you'll, you'll get fil you'll get filtered light, you know, like a, a, a light beam or something, so you have like a swath that's the wrong color and it'll just screw up everything. Um, for my stuff, I tend not to shoot with a gray card. I so should, so do I you shoot auto, auto white um, balance on your, quite honestly, your, your camera, or do you, do you set it? Um, and I color correct after the fact. I do, yeah. I shoot out a white balance and then, and then color correct. Um, if you're dealing with strobes, if you're in a studio situation, you can set your white balance for your first shot and then just apply them to all your subsequent shots and you know do any tweaking from there and sometimes i'll really play with the color balance to white balance to really get an effect i'm going for anyway sometimes okay i might want to go a little bit more blue or a little bit more you know towards the red just to, to kind of get a mood <coughs> mood in there that kind of stuff you know so 
I like I said, I should shoot with a with a with a great card to, to get a good baseline, but I end up playing with it so much anyways after the fact that to some extent's always almost moot. You know. Because it's just kind of fun to see what you can you know, you get an idea and you can kind of tweak things a little bit and then really Creativity play with comes them and cool. sometimes really just blow things out a lot more than you would do if you were just going for a straight a straight shot. Right, you get to you get to you create an image and you can kind of really tweak it and make something. Well, uh, we've, we've talked about your gear. Yeah, Are you going to give us a demonstration it. of uh, how you um, use it? So, yeah, I think we can do a, a really quick one. Um, I know my model's sitting over okay. here getting really tired. <laughs> Hello. So, so I gotta get her packing mind. off in a bit pretty soon, so. Um, I was just gonna do some, uh, just some fairly basic, uh, just portrait shots and just kind of show just a little bit of what's Great stuff. going on with it and, you know, blind the camera with the strobes and mm -hmm. it kind of works with it. I, I think we get something together pretty easily. One fun thing about the vinyl is that it moves on you. So give me one second. Uh -huh. Yeah, but because it's because it's a plastic, it will actually slide a little bit, and you have to adjust it before you shoot it. Because just walking on it will get little ridges and things, and so it doesn't matter if you're just doing headshots, but if you're doing full body, you have to make sure that everything's clear and you've got to smooth out as much as you can before you go and, and, and shoot something out. Um, so because I've got, I haven't actually done any shots in a, in a couple of days, I'm going to have to actually do a couple of test shots. I've done some basic settings. Okay. Um, I like to shoot ISO 100, ISO 200. I like those longer, the, those slower film speeds. They just make for a nice, a, a softer look. Um, okay. And then one thing I found with the strobes that I've got anyways, I can't go over about 1 200 for my, my shutter settings. I can push it to 120, to, to 2, 25, 250, something like that. But if you do anything faster than that, just with the with my transmitter and the receiver yeah. and, and going to the strobes are a little bit slow. Um, you start getting this kind of curtain effect where yeah, the that's, that's light the be, of the you know, the, like uh, half the frame will be black of the power of the light. It's so it's, it's kind of a, your, it's, your, it's uh, one of the limitations of these, these cheaper lights. They just kind of. Right. Right, but you know you can you know you keep it under two hundred, and you can do a lot with your with your f stop and okay. and just kind of play around and, and figure out what's going to work for for the mood you're kind of working at. Um, you know the the downside is I'm limited as to how shallow a depth of field I can go right now. You know I can I can power down the lights and go for a lower f-stop but only so far with these lights because they okay. they have okay. three settings basically they have quarter half and full right which like I said just just you just kind of have to kind of work with them a little bit but you'll get a feel for what you can do and what you can't do yes <laughs> and you can you know, show what you can do and you can't do and you just kind of work around that a little bit. I'm just going to make sure that these are both firing here real, real quick. Okay. And uh, um, I, I, I've i got a, you know, I've got a, the, the transmitter on top of the, the camera, it sits on the hot shoe, and I was just doing a test fire to make sure that they were both actually on and receiving. Because it's just easier to do that than 
ways to ways to frame to, to see if that's going to do anything at all. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so I don't know, just kind of very basic, you know, do a nice a nice B light so you get even lighting on both sides and the and the the soft boxes are going to give you that nice wide. They call it a wrappy light because it just kind of wraps around the subject a lot more. You don't get a lot of those deep shadows that you might with a, a direct light. If I had the if I had that uh, mm -hmm. the barn doors on, and I had that as a, a direct light as one of my lights, that would create a lot of shadow on the on the on the other side because it's much more direct and really points in. Right. Yeah. Great stuff. That's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nail the exposure on the first thing. <laughs> <clears throat> but it's one of those, you know, when when any any set of lights, whatever you have, the more you use it, you just kind of get a feel for it. Like, okay, I'm going to be doing this, so. I'm going to start here and see what I want to do. Sure. And uh, so what I'll do is um, I'm not going to process these tonight probably because it's getting can, late. Uh, we but, can see the uh, results I'll, of tonight's work. That'd be great. I'll uh, right, just kind of yeah, that'd be great. For the, I'm sure the the viewers would be interested to know you like you know what they can buy and where yeah. they can buy it. And if uh, if you want any links to any of the the stuff I've got, I can give you some Amazon links or something sure. like that. Well, Amazon, just because it's easy, everybody's got Amazon somewhere, but you can take the same thing and, you know, shop around and find your place, but I get, I get the Amazon Prime, so I tend to buy from them just because they don't have to pay for the shipping. Moving back over to the shipping. You gotta have fun while you're shooting anyway. That's the fun part about models, you actually have to make them laugh sometimes. Anyway. Sure. Sometimes you can't make me stop laughing. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Well that's that's all yeah, that's always, you know. <laughs> if it's not fun, it's not fun, right? Nobody's having fun. And then you don't get you never get the results you want. Unless you're going for some sort of sob story, and then I don't know. I don't want to do that. Right. One of the fun things about yeah. having a small studio is that you know I shoot most things with my 50. And sometimes you have to get no. really far back. <laughs> I, you know, I don't think you'd have a model for too long to do it later. You, know, <laughs> you don't really want to shoot a model with your wide angle lens. <laughs> yeah, you get that really weird distortion in there. <laughs> so, what sort of settings are you using on there, Olive? <laughs> no, I wouldn't have a life too long if I did that. <laughs> So, um, like, right. So right now I'm shooting. Uh, I've got ISO 200. I've got one one hundredth of a second, and uh, F13. So you get a fairly sharp picture. Um, I don't like to shoot below 100 if I'm freeform. Too much if I can avoid yeah. it. Right, because you just don't want to have that that motion blur from from your from your low end, you know, from your from your low speed. Yeah, get different um, angles, etc. And and how have, <laughs> how have you arrived at your settings? I mean, is this just trial and error? Um, do you, you use a, a flash meter? Um, I don't right now. Well, I I have a Canon Sigma Flash Meter, which is settings because 
it's wrong. It'll be completely wrong, right? Because you're buying a strobo. Um, I do not currently have a spot meter because they're a bit expensive. Well, we're, to, we're talking minimum yeah, here. Anyway, if you're going to so do, if you're going to use that, that, metering that for my, my curiosity, so you, you have to have a meter. Uh, you've got your settings, your experience, you playing around and trying things out. And <laughs> you've arrived at yeah. it, so you've done it without a meter, which is which is great. Like you know, that's less expensive. Right, exactly. All right. Well, you know, I, you, once you've fired about ten or fifteen shots, you really start to get a handle for it. It comes on, you know, for, I think for most people it comes on pretty quickly, just what your, um, you know, kind of where you're at. And like I said, with these cheaper lights, you can't go over about, you keep it under 200 for your, for your, you know, exposure, you know, your shutter speed. And, you know, it's, it's all that, it's all that magic triangle of, you know, your ISO versus your shutter speed versus your f-stop. And where do you like to shoot your ISO? I like to lower exactly. ISO. If I was shooting higher ISO, obviously I'd have to go nice, nice higher portrait f -stop. But at the same time, that's not something you really want to do, I think, from a model's perspective, because you don't want it to be too crisp. No, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> right, you want, you want something fairly soft and something you can, you know, that, that's, just gonna, that's gonna look very nice. Um, where, so, you don't want to go like F32 or something yeah. like that, because that would just be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So you slow the film speed down and uh -huh. just kind of balance where you want to be with your f-stop versus your, versus your shutter speed within like that range that you're comfortable in. I so I like 100 to 200 in the, in the studio if I can. Yeah, I'm shooting a little bit higher f-stop because I like a little bit more crisp in the stuff that I do versus a really okay. soft, focused, you know, shallow depth of field sort of shot where you, you know, I don't like it when like the, you know, the model's hair starts to exactly, yeah. get yeah. out of focus because your depth of field is so shallow. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you just kind of try to balance all these things together. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this just says personal taste. Yeah, could be an advantage sometimes. Yeah. It's the problem with having a model that's also a photographer, so tell you what the hell to do, right? <laughs> Particularly when it's your wife, she does it twice. I'm looking forward to the results of these shots. And then I'm towards you a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Alright. <laughs> you know, the, the, like I said, the really big thing is just kind of figure out what's what you want to shoot and try and, if you shop around, you can find the pieces that are going to do what you want to do, right? Um, you know, I found, and just figure on, one, one thing that I found that's worked really well for me is to start out really basic. Okay. Yeah. And try to, everything that you buy, figure that it's going to be A, replaceable, and B, try to find the pieces that you can upgrade for sure. in stages. For sure. Right, so if you were to buy a light stand and the light and the soft box, but you could only use the soft box with that light, with that stand, you're limiting yourself right there, right? And you can't. It could be the cheapest thing in the world, but if you got to go buy all of them again all over to upgrade, you've wasted the money. Right, so like my, you know, my my stands are from my old static set. They been repurposed to the strobes, you know, the soft boxes I've obviously added in later. You know, I shot for a long for a while with a long time with the umbrellas from the statics in with the strobes. You know. So I just basically replaced just the light part and then I started getting, you know, soft boxes and other bits of kit to go along with it. Um and just kind of build on it. But 
you know, you don't have to have the fanciest gear to produce good results. It's like anything else. You know, they, they talk about, you know, a lot of people talk about, you know, the, you hear the old, you know, all of those arguments, what camera should I buy? Which <laughs> doesn't really matter to a large extent. You know, for, for 98% of the population, it doesn't matter, you know. I don't need that Mark, the Mark III that just came out. It, exactly. it would be nice, but what it would actually gain me is minimal compared to, you know, um, compared to the pictures I would take. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, it would be a little bit sharper. I might have a little bit wider, you know, ISO range. Could shoot movies. Who cares? And that, and that's the same with um, like, you know. You get the ability yeah. to do. Um, you know, you just get that. You know, you get the nice full frame sensor where you get you know, a little bit more, a little bit more image quality. But it, it, it really is. Yeah, you know, Great. I've done, I've done some really fun stuff with speed lights and fruit roll ups. Mm-hmm. You know, that came out every bit as cool as anything I could do in, in the studio with, with the rig I've got. Right? <clears throat> and that was a $15 speed light that I bought from a friend of mine because I needed a, I needed a, neck, a, second, a, a second speed light. You know, it was like a 10 year old Vivitar, completely manual. You got to pull the hood and dial the thing. And, you know, there's not an automatic bone in the thing's body. And it wouldn't talk to my camera anyways, even if it did. <laughs> you know, you've, you've given us a great insight in what we can buy at a reasonable price, a very reasonable price, and uh, results right. that we can achieve with it. And um, a great starting point to decide out whether yeah. we'd like to do this, this style of photography with uh, studio lighting or uh, even speed lights. That's it's all applicable. So... Um, I, I think we'll wrap this up here, Olive. Uh, I want to thank you very much. Uh, you know, as I say, you've given us great insight uh, with, with low budget and minimalist lights. And I, for one, look forward to the results yeah. of your, your, your couple of shots you took tonight. Uh, I'm sure they'll be amazing, as they usually are. And uh, I thank you very much. Not a problem. It's my pleasure. So. We'll say goodbye for now, and uh, we look forward to our next midweek photo talk. But this is uh, a wrap-up for this week. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kat. Bye-bye. And thank you for having me. Good night, Kev. Cheers. <laughs>